Alright, I believe we are live. Sorry for the uh, confusion stuff of other things. I'm still trying out a new stuff. Anyway, good morning, hello! Welcome to The State in History, a.k.a. TDH. This show is about what happened to date throughout the annals of recorded history. Join us as we delve throughout uh, yesteryear, not only for interesting and important happenings, but to possibly even answer questions you don't know you have. The sources of this information come from the Smart Device application to Today in History, What Happened Today in History, Historical Calendar, and this website on thestate.com. For links to these sources and anything else potentially interesting, please check the underbar in the description below. And all thing, all links gathered throughout the show will appear post live stream as usual. Anyway, I am AO Xander, and you are you. We might be joined by uh, who is Alice, or you know, uh, Lady Death, or however one one of her billion nickname monikers that she has. Um, the Loon will not be joining us today because he's actually at work. Uh, things are. Switched up because of Thanksgiving coming up. And by the way, happy Thanksgiving. Anybody celebrating that? Anyway, uh, today is November 20th. It is Moon's Day, a.k.a. Monday, 2023. Let's jump into the history, shall we? Starting us off in 284, Roman general Diocletian proclaimed emperor by armies of the East and West after the death of Carnius at the Battle of the Margus. Ah, all right. They we're doing a pretty good time jump here into 762. Bogu, Khan of the Uyghurs, Khan, conquered Luoyang, capital of the Chinese Empire. That's a little uh, interesting thing with what's going on right now, actually, in today's world with uh, China, with what they're doing uh, to, you know, certain people and whatnot. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's move on up here. 1194, Palermo, Sicily, was conquered by Holy Roman Emperor Henry VI. Yeah, and, of course, Palermo, you know, uh, it's uh, that's the, the the football to the boot that is Italy, um, and uh, yeah, so uh, historically uh, significant in World War Two and whatnot location area. Uh, Twelve seventy two, Edward the First proclaimed King of England after the death of his father Henry the Third. He would take two years to return to England from the Ninth Crusade. So that's interesting. He was out fighting, uh, you know, uh, for you know, God, and. Um, and he was proclaimed king while out on campaign, and uh, he, get, he gets back home as king. That's kind of sad, though. You know, you go, you go fight for king and country and God, and then your dad dies, you know, and then you're king while you're out, and then you come back, you know, to kind of uh, I, I'm probably a bad use of this word, serendipitous, I'm not sure. Anyway, 1407, a truce between Joan the Fearless, Duke of Burgundy, and Louis of Valois, Duke of Orléans, was agreed under the auspices of John, Duke of Berry. Orléans would be assassinated three days later in Burgundy. Yikes. So, um, yeah, and this is where uh, New Orleans gets its name from. You know, out in, uh, what is it, Louisiana, I think? New Orleans? Uh, it's actually Orléans. So, New Orléans. And that was, you know, a French area. You don't forget the Louisiana Purchase and all that stuff. Uh, 1431, first meeting of the Order of the Golden Fleece. What is that? That sounds like some kind of, like, My Little Pony, like, thing. Uh, the Distinguished Order of the Golden Fleece, in Spanish, is, uh, Esegre Orden de la Toison de Oro, or German, Orden vom Golden Valles, uh, is a Catholic order of chivalry founded in Burgess by Philip the Good, Duke of Burgundy, in 1430, uh, to celebrate his marriage to Isabella of Portugal. Oh, wow, so it's a whole order just uh, revolving around marriage. It's very much akin to uh, Oktoberfest, how it got started, uh, having been a wedding reception, and then the people wanted to celebrate it the next year, and then it turned into a thing. 1461, astronomer Regio Montanus returned with Cardinal Basilios uh, Basilians to his house in Rome, home of one of the largest libraries in Europe. Ooh, that's pretty cool. 1521, Arabs attributed shortage of water in Jerusalem to Jews making wine. Okay, well, you know, it's, it's a little late for, for the joke I actually used yesterday, but, like, it wasn't that, the, it wasn't, you know, the Jews making water to turn into wine. It was one Jew uh, turning water into wine. <laughs> but that was 1,521 years prior to this. Uh, so, anyway, moving on up to 1637, Peter Menuet and the first Swedish immigrants to Delaware sailed from Sweden. So, this is when they first set off. Uh, so, they're on their way to Delaware. So, that's uh, pretty interesting. The first Swedish immigrants to Delaware. 1695, Zumbi, the last king of the Quilombo dos Palomares in early Brazil, an ex-slave, was executed and decapitated, and his head was displayed on a pike to dispel any legend of his immortality. Yikes! 
I guess that's one way to set a message. I mean, I had a, a very similar idea with all the ducks that keeps invading my pool during mating season. You know, like, uh, I have several ideas to ward the ducks away. So, uh, 1759, Battle of Quiberian Bay began. British won crucial naval victory over the French, thwarting a planned French invasion of Britain. That is pretty big. Uh, if that had succeeded, you know, history as we know it would have been completely vastly different. Like, all it takes is one event, you know, it doesn't have, matter how big or how small, you know, all it takes, you know, the butterfly effect. Like, everything is important. I mean, every last thing is important, you know. Like, if, 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 I, if I move, you know, my, my vape juice from this side of my desk to the other, that might set off a series of events where, like, you know, I look over there and I'm like, I get an architecture idea and then I make a build. Who knows? Every minute detail of life, of everything is significant. Uh, 1789, New Jersey was the first state to ratify the Bill of Rights. Hey, nice. All right. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, make a cheer while we can. Can I still use cheer? Yes, I can. Uh, I, I ended my uh, nitro, so uh, I'm going to have to find some other um, uh, soundboard thing. But where's my cheer? Here we go. Go New Jersey, of all places. Uh, that's that's a situation here. Uh, 1795, Kiraco government forbade slave work on Sunday, and I believe that has to do with religious reasons. You know, with Sunday being you know God's day, you know of rest and all that stuff. Like they don't, like even though slaves were slaves, they still didn't want to. They weren't doing it for the slaves. They were doing it for religious reasons, I believe. So that's that's what makes sense to me. Moving on up into the 1800s, 1805, Ludwig von Beethoven's Fidelo, his only opera, premiered at Vienna Theater, uh, pardon me, Vienna's Theater and Der Wien. All right. That was weird. Uh, 1815, Russia, Prussia, Austria, and England signed an alliance for the maintenance of peace in Europe on the same day as the Treaty of Paris. Uh, and we're going to be talking about uh, that here in a second. So the Treaty of Paris, it that. That molds into this here, 1815, the Second Treaty of Paris. Uh, France and her allies agreed France will pay indemnities after the Battle of Waterloo, ending the Napoleonic Wars. So that is big. The entirety of Europe was threatened by Napoleon. Uh, and then later on, the entirety of Europe will be threatened by Germany. And then later on, the, the entirety of Europe, Europe will be threatened by Germany again, and then by Russia. And then it's currently being uh, threatened by, you know, ridiculous politics. Uh Originally stemming from Germany, again. <laughs> Damn you, Angela Merkel. Moving on up to 1820, whaling ship Essex was attacked and sunk by a sperm whale in the southern Pacific. Only eight of the 20 crew uh, men eventually survive through cannibalism. This is the inspiration for the novel Moby Dick. All right. And I don't know why this isn't highlighted. That's a very influential, uh, you know, very known uh, work of literature. And... Um, it's, it's based off of a, a historical fact. Well, not a, a historical thing, but, like, well, this is historic. You know what I mean. Like, the events of Moby Dick is not, like, one-to-one -one what happened, but it's, you know, this is the inspiration for that book. Anyway, 1861, secession ordinance was filed by Kentucky's Confederate government. This is, of course, during the U.S. Civil War, or the American Civil War, I guess, or the North American Civil War. Because there's plenty of civil wars in South America. I don't know why we proclaim ourselves as the American Civil War. There's been dozens, especially in Mexico. Well, uh, moving on up, uh, 1866, the first national convention of the Grand Army of the Republic, Veterans Organization. So I believe uh, this is uh, after the Civil War for the U.S. Uh, the Grand Army of the Republic, yeah, this is, uh, it has to be the Civil War. Because we were the Republic in the North, for which it stands. Yeah, here we go. Grand Army of the Republic. Uh, what does it say? It's a fraternal organization composed of veterans of the Union Army, Union Navy, and the Marines who served in the U.S. in the American Civil War, as I surmised. It was founded in 1866 in Decatur, Illinois, and grew to include hundreds of posts across the North and West. So, like you know, uh, you know, districts or not districts, but like you know, HQs, like. Like, you know how, how police have, like, precincts and all that stuff? Kind of kind of like that. So let me add that in the end of our description section. That will be posted there post-show. Let's move on up here. 1866, French inventor Pierre Lalamont patented the rotary crank bicycle. What is a rotary crank bicycle? Um, uh, might just be the pedals? Okay, yeah. The pedals. Um, it has to be. Let's see here. Uh, rotary crank 
padded support for the ch oh you actually lay down on that so and you have the handle down there oh so okay sector gear pinion on one-way clutch okay well that's that's an interesting thing right there let me uh, add uh, Pierre Lamont's wiki into here as well let's uh, move on up here what else do we got 1866 Sherlock Holmes's first story a study in Scarlet was accepted by publisher Ward and Locke with a payment of 25 pounds all right 1888 Willard Bundy uh, yeah, Willard Bundy patented the time card clock hey thank you for thank you very much for that now you know punch in punch out and uh, anybody who saw the 2019 Joker movie oh I forgot to punch out boom 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 <laughs> That was a great uh, uh, that was a great scene right there. Uh, 1890 Pope Leo the 13th encyclical on slavery in the missions. And let me just look up this entire article um, uh, because slavery in the uh, in the missions uh, there there are slaves you know everywhere and apparently they had uh, the Catholic Church had slaves working in the missions. Um, let's see here. What does this say? Hold on a second. <laughs> Sorry. Hold on. I hope uh, I hope I have my mic settings correct and it didn't pick up my blowing my nose. Uh, anyway, uh, December twenty second, um, so that's in two days from now, seventeen forty one, and this is eighteen ninety. So this is something else. Um, okay, Catholic Church and slavery. All right. Well, let's just uh, let's just add this in here. You know, this will probably cover whatever it is I was looking for. What else do we got here? Nineteen hundred two. Finally, in the nineteen hundreds. Uh, Gio Le uh, Ferve and Henry Desgrange created the Tour de France bicycle race. All right. Um, you know, so the Tour de France. Uh, what else do we got here? 1910, revolution broke out in Mexico, led by Francisco uh, I. Madero. What did I talk about? You know, revolutions, uh, especially, you know, in, um, uh, you know, Central and South America and everything. A very destabilized area of the world, historically, even today. And hold on a second, I need to blow my nose again. Sorry about that. I'm not sure if you can hear, but it's really, really windy. So it's it's pushing a whole bunch of crap and dust up in here and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, so you have a revolution in Mexico. 1911, the funeral of Paul and Laura Lafargue, the daughter of Karl Marx, was Paris uh, in Paris, was attended by Lenin. The two socialists died in a suicide pact in the belief that their political usefulness was at an end. And the world would be a much better place if the rest of these people who follow them follow them all the way, you know, to the end like this. Like, because, you know, these people really don't have any form of political usefulness at all. Um, anyway, 1914, the U.S. State Department started requiring photographs for passports. That makes sense, you know, so I'm 100% in agree with that. Uh, 1917, the first successful tank use in battle at the Battle of Cambrai in World War I as Britain used the new technology to break through German lines. I don't know why that's not highlighted. That is historically significant, majorly. The first use, first successful use of a tank in battle. You know, not just the first use, but the first successful. So, you know, that's, you know, still very important. You know, tanks are now, like, you know, one of the primary war machines, you know, used by anybody trying to fight other people. And speaking of fighting other people, 1917 as well, Ukrainian Republic was declared. Hey, that's very topical with what's going on today as well. 1919, first municipally owned airport in the United States opened in Tucson, Arizona. I know a couple people who live out there, so that's pretty interesting. That's the, uh, the first uh, municipally owned airport. So, like, you know, like the municipal airports that you got, the smaller ones, whatever. Hey, you know what? Let's look it up. What is a municipal airport? What is a municipal airport? Because I want the definition. It is an airport owned by a city or municipality. It has referred to municipal airport Missouri, Unionville, Missouri, United States, uh, municipal airport Oklahoma, Texoma, Oklahoma, United States, you know, for example. So if for whatever reason you want to learn more about municipal airports, I will include a link in the other part of the description, you know, as, as well. Let's move on up to 1923. Garrett Morgan patented his traffic signal design, an important development in automobile safety. Yes, it is. And I am one of the most anal-retentive, you know, people involving driving that you'll ever meet in your entire life, ever. 
Like, I have no tolerance for bad drivers. You are driving a two-plus-ton death machine hunk of metal with controlled explosions under the hood. Honor it. Cherish it. It is a privilege, not a right. Moving on up to 1923 as well. Written mark replaced the paper mark as the official currency of Germany at the exchange rate of one written mark to one trillion, or one billion on the long scale, paper mark. And I believe this was before the... Um, uh, the Deutschmark, but hold on a second. When was Deutsch D U E T C H mark? I know I'm not spelling that. Uh, okay, the Deutschmark was Germany's legal currency from 1948 to 2022 or to 2002. In 2002, Germany replaced the Deutschmark with the euro. So now they have they don't have their own actual individual uh, currency. They are completely and totally reliant on the European economy, which is really scary. Uh, but yeah, so this was before the Deutsche Mark. So there we go. Uh, Alice and I, while we were writing this script yesterday, uh, researching and writing and all that stuff, we uh, were trying to figure out and if uh, you know the Deutsche Mark was afterward. I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was a Hitler invention, uh, but uh, obviously not. 1948, actually. Yeah, yeah. 48 was after. Yeah, Hitler. That's right. Uh, 1929, Salvador Dali's first one-man show. All right. Two years later, 1931, uh, Rolls-Royce acquisition of Bentley Motors was announced. Yep. Uh, Bentley, you know, uh, you know Rolls-Royce and Bentley, two very you know, prominent names in the uh, automobile industry. And one owns the other. 1934, 17-year-old pitcher uh, Iji Sawamura gave up just one hit, a Lou Gehrig home run, as U.S. All-Stars defeated Japan one to none. Oh, man. So, uh, good old uh, EIG, however you pronounce his name, you know, just, his one screw-up cost the game. Whoops. Uh, 1934, new Belgian government of Thunus, Frankway, and Gut, three bankers. That is very, very disturbing. Uh, a government uh, controlled by bankers. Um, well, I mean, you know, look at the Federal Reserve and, like, the whole history behind all that and the Rothschilds and, you know, what did they what they did after the Napoleonic Wars and all that stuff. So, you know what that reminds me? I'm going to bring this up again. Anybody who hasn't seen this, the, Amer the American Dream. Uh, not that one. This one. Okay. This is the, the video. I've referred to this video many times throughout this show, uh, and I'm going to do so again. Uh, because uh, if anyone hasn't watched this, this is extremely informative in an entertaining fashion, but uh, it's historical correctness. It's fact. Uh, let's see. Moving on up. 1934. Toronto Maple Leafs left wing Busher Jackson became the first NHL player to score full go four goals in a period and 5-2 to two win over St. Louis Eagles at the St. Louis Arena. Ah, so they, they kicked the home team in the teeth. Um, yeah. 1936, uh, yeah, Jose Antonio Primo de Rivera, founder of the Falange, was killed by a Republican execution squad. Um, okay, well, uh, founder of the Falange. Uh, let's look this up. What is the Falange? Uh, copy, F-A-L-A-N-G-E. What was Falange? Okay, um... Uh, oh, what was the Spanish Falange movement? Uh, the Spanish Falange supported conservative ideas about women and supported rigid gender roles that stipulated that women's main duties in life were to be loving mothers and... Whoa. Uh, this policy was set against that of the Second Spanish Republic that provided universal suffrage to women. Okay. Well, I don't agree with him getting executed, but I disagree with uh, with some of the basis of, uh, of that ideology. You know, like... Nobody should be pigeonholed into a certain role in the world ever. So no matter no matter what you are, what you have between your legs, you, what your skin color is, what's between your ears, you know, do what you want. As and as long as you're not hurting other people in any form, I don't care. Anyway, moving on up to uh, 1938, the first documented anti-Semitic remarks over U.S. radio by Father Colligan. This is 1938 at the. Um, in the height of, uh, you know, funny mustache man from Austria's reign. Uh, so, um, yeah, just wanted, uh, it's, it's a historical document, so, yeah. 1948, World War II, Hungary, Romania, and Slovakia joined the Axis powers. Yeah, they did. 1941, 
Adam Namora and Kurushu handed over Japanese last diplomatic notes. Now, look at the date. It is November 20th, and this is 1941. This is, this is uh, between Japan and U.S. What happened in about two and a half, three weeks from now? December 7th, 1941, a date that will live in infamy. So, here you go. Uh, 1942, British 8th Army recaptured Benghazi, Libya. And Benghazi is a very famous name because of a certain uh, person who was the wife of a president who tried to run. And you know, all of her friends just keep on suiciding, you know, so very, very fishy. Uh, yeah, 1942 as well. The NHL abolished regular season overtime until the Second World War was over, and yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's cool that they're having games. I don't know why they would abolish overtime, but maybe people had schedules to you know a lot, lot tighter ship. You know, they want to get back to, um, you know, to home to, to read letters if if they arrived, you know, from from their sweetheart or their or their children on the front line or whatever. Uh, anyway, while that was going on as well. The Alaska Highway at 2,451 kilometers long from Dawson Creek, British Columbia to Fairbanks, Alaska was uh, first opened to military traffic. And that was a major, major undertaking uh, because, of course, we had Alaska in the Aleutian Islands. And, you know, a lot of people don't know that um, the Aleutian Islands, well, you know, we people know this part, that that is part of sovereign U.S. territory. Some of these islands were invaded and Occupied by Japanese forces during the Second World War, they're you know way up in the North area, uh, but still that is that is U.S. territory, and to prevent Japan you know from doing any more shenanigans up there, we needed to get you know men, ammunition, supplies, tanks, whatever you know things up to Alaska. Couldn't really do it by sea you know without the threat of Japan you know doing wartime things. So we created that whole highway. Uh, Canada allowed us to do that and. You know, it, it's it's used today, and that was, you know, a major, major undertaking. And, like, uh, the the story behind the Alaska Highway is a breathtaking one, uh, to be honest. Uh, you can go look that up of, after this show, of course. Anyway, moving on up to 1944, we have the first Japanese suicide submarine attack at the uh, Luithia Atoll in Carolines. Uh, not the Carolinas, but the Carolines. Sweet Caroline. Ba, ba, ba. Um, but, um... But yeah, no, I was just talking about, you know, Japanese wartime shenanigans. Well, here's one, you know, they weren't just kamikaze with planes. You know, they, 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 you know, bottom of the barrel, you know, difficult times come for difficult solutions. They wanted to win, no matter the cost. I mean, we were talking just yesterday uh, on the uh, the history show, I believe. I, I know the loon brought this up about um, uh, the last J Japanese to surrender was, I believe, in 1960. 72, 4, or 6. It was in the 1970s. And he only did so because he demanded his CO, his, his you know, commanding officer, to order him to stand down. And thankfully his CO was still alive and they got him out there and he got him to stand down. So, uh, pretty, pretty amazing story that one is, actually. Uh, it's 1944 as well. Amsterdam, Volden Park was closed because of capping of trees. What does that mean? Capping of trees. Capping of trees? Are somebody out there popping caps of the trees? Uh, uh, okay, we'll see here. Capping of trees. Let's see. Uh, capping tree. Okay, that's something else. Capping tree service. All right. Well, if you need tree services, there you go. Uh, capping of trees. Um, uh, Von Dill Park. What kind of trees are... Okay, well... I don't know how to figure this out, so if anybody does, please let me know in the under bar, in the, in, pardon me, in the description section, not description, God, comments, the comments section. My brain is not braining right now. 1945, the Nuremberg War Trials began as 24 Nazi leaders were put on trial before judges representing the victorious Allied powers. Yeah, you know, very big uh, event right there, Nuremberg Trials. Well, uh, let's see here. 1947, we have the first permanent TV installed on the scene going vessel. Yeah, once again, another New Jersey thing. Um, so, yeah, prior to this, uh, if you wanted to watch TV on the boat, you, you had to bring it on board, plug it in, whatever it is that you needed to do. You know, attach your antenna or, you know, I don't think VHSs were, were a thing back then. Um, so, but, yeah, so anybody who has a boat out there with a TV in it, you know, this is, uh, this is your grandpa right here. 1947 as well, United Nations General Assembly began a debate on printing their own stamps. 
And let's hope they are not of the mushroom variety. I don't want to run into a problem like we did yesterday. <laughs> oh, that was comedy. 1949, Jewish population of Israel reached 1 million people because they were all shoehorned in by European movements to get them out of Europe. So, yeah, and I have a thing or two to say about all that rigmarole, but that's for a different show at another time. 1943, Scott Crossfield in Douglas Skyrocket was the first to break Mach 2 at 1,300 miles per hour. That is really fast. And I got to catch up here. Um, that um, that should be highlighted. The first one to break Mach 2, twice as fast as the speed of sound. Like, that is, that's incredible. Uh, while that was going on, uh, two years after that, actually, 1955, Pauli uh, Umrigar scored India's first test cricket double century, 223 versus New Zealand. All right. And I, it's only in there because this is India's first, you know, cricket double century. So, you know, pretty cool. I don't give a tiddler's damn about cricket, but historical, you know, you know, things are historical things. And I can't, I can't be biased in any way or another. You know, I just got to report the facts. Muppets. Um, 1958, uh, U.S. puppeteers Jim and Jane Henson established Muppets, Inc., which is now known as the Jim Henson Company. So, yeah, uh, you know, uh, Muppets and Muppet Babies and all that stuff. What else do we got here? Uh, 1959, the U.N. adopts Universal Declaration of Children's Rights. Okay. And then 1962, Mickey Mantle wins the American League Ma Major League Baseball. Wins, win, blah, blah, blah. Mickey Mantle won American League Most Valuable Player for the third time. Wow, you know he's Mickey Mantle, bro. You know, like <laughs> one of the one of the most known names in all of baseball ever. Uh, 1962 as well, the USSR or the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, Russia, the Soviet Union, agreed to remove the remaining Ilyushin uh, uh, IL-28 bomber jets from Cuba, and the U.S. lifts block, uh, their blockade in response. And this is, of course, during the Cuban Missile Crisis. We spoke about this yesterday during the show uh, as well. And uh, so I'd recommend going to that because there's a link about uh, JFK. Really interesting, uh, you know, him talking with... Um, uh, no, it's not Gorbachev. Why can't I remember uh, who was leader of the Soviet Union back then? But the, the guy played by... Uh, oh, hell, I forgot the guy's name as well from Death of Stalin. Anyway... Uh, 1964, Dmitry Sosokovich's ninth and 10th string quartet premieres in Moscow. And he made it in here, and I've spoken, of, well, we've spoken about this guy a lot on this show, and you can see all of these articles are his. He was the musician of the people in the Soviet Union. He was the one man, to my knowledge, uh, that Joseph Stalin could not do anything about. Because the entirety of the Soviet Union loved him. He was the musician of the people. And if, if Stalin had tried to do anything against him, like, you know, like, you know, any of the shenanigans that he did with everybody else, with his purges and, and you know, removals, then he would have lost the support of his, of his own country. They would have ousted him. Like, this is the one man theoretically more powerful than Stalin himself, you know, during that time. Not powerful, but you know, untouchable at least. Anyway, 1965, the United Nations Security Council called for a boycott of Rhodesia. I wonder what, what was going on with Rhodesia at that time. Let's do a quick look up. Uh, they imposed military sanctions, voluntary arms embargo, and economic sanctions and oil embargo against the Rhodesian government on November 20th, 1965. Oh, Zimbabwe was involved with this too. So if anybody wants to know more about that, uh, here's uh, this is going to be in the underbar as well. What else do we got here? 1966. Dallas sacked Pittsburgh quarterbacks an NFL record 12 times. Ouch. I don't know really what that means, but that looks like a pretty painful number right there. While that was going on, John Kander and Fred Ebb's Cabaret opened at Broadhurst Theater in New York City, running for 1,166 performances, winning eight Tony Awards. That is a lot of performances and a lot of awards. That's a cabaret. That's a, you know, that's a cabaret, man. And we also have men in Zurich voted against female suffrage. That's not too cash money right there. Um, a lot of female suffrage the past uh, 48 hours going on. 1967, at 11 in the morning, the census clock at the Department of Commerce ticks past 200 million. Whatever the hell that means. Let's do a quick surface level scan of that potential rabbit hole. Population. Okay, that's the population. So this is... Uh, um, Population clock reaches 200 million. 
So this was 1967, so I guess that was a world population in question mark? Wouldn't we have been a billion by then? I'm not sure. If anybody knows more about this, please let us know in the comments section. Anyway, moving on up to 1969. This one's uh, really interesting. Alcatraz Island off San Francisco was seized by militant Native Americans, inspiring Wilma uh, Mankiller to become involved. Wow, what a name. Wilma Mankiller. Whoa, that is, uh, that is not a good name right there. Uh, and she's only involved in one historical thing. So, uh, huh. Oh, wait, no, that's her cause of death. I thought that was her astrological sign. Uh, cause of death, cancer. Well, with a name like Mankiller, you know. I don't know. She might have been the nicest lady in the world. I don't know, but that's a really not a good name. Uh, 1969, Brazilian soccer icon Pelé scored his 1,000th goal! Sorry, I had to do it like the Brazilians. So, you know how they like to scream goal. So, yeah. We also have in 1970 the first black woman to be crowned Miss World, Jennifer Hostin from Granada at the Royal Albert Hall in London. The event was interrupted by women's liberation activists. What are, why? What are you trying to liberate her from her position? Like she, she's getting, she is, as a female, is getting an honorary, you know, a, a, a freaking, like, position. What, what are you doing, women's liberation activist people? Like, come on. While I was going on, uh, the UN General Assembly accept, assemb, assemble, yeah, assembly did I say it right? I don't know. Accepted membership of the People's Republic of China. Bad move. Bad move. Wow. Yikes. 1972. British sol or two British soldiers were killed in a booby trap bomb in uh, Kolyhana County, Armagh, and uh, we looked that up. And actually, this is part of the troubles uh, in uh, Ireland and everything. Um, uh, Colihanna. Um, it is a small village in Townland in County Armagh, Northern Ireland. The village extends further over the townlands of Tully Naval and Friedhof. It had a population of 306 in the 201 sex census. Wow, that is a very small village. 306, uh, 2001. So 22 years ago, it had 306 people. That is a very small what what are what is the IRA doing putting bombs out there? That's kind of weird. Anyway, 1974, the U.S. flew an antitrust suit or f filed flu. I, I can't read. 1974, the U.S. filed an antitrust suit to break up AT&T. Hell yes. And didn't we talk about AT&T earlier today? Or there was was it earlier here? AT&T. I'm not sure. Um, I think it was yesterday actually. Now that I, no, no, here it is. Uh, 1931, the commercial teletype service began AT&T. I might have skipped over that earlier. So uh, this is when AT&T began and when the U.S. government is trying to split them up. And, you know, uh, monopoly laws, you know, like all this too big to fail. When things get too big to fail, there's a problem in the system. Nothing should ever get to the point where it's too big to fail because now we're relying on it and it can do whatever the hell it wants with, you know, with impunity. And that is not good. Uh, one year later, 1975, Ronald Reagan announced candidacy for Republican nomination for U.S. President. All right. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Reagan smash. Reagan smash. Reagan sleepy. If anybody understands that, you know, from South Park, not South Park, uh, Family Guy. Uh, 1976, George Harrison appeared on Saturday Night Live, haggling with Lorne Michaels, performing Here Comes the Sun in Homeward Bound with Paul Simon, and airing two music videos. All right. We also have 1977, Egyptian President Anwar Sadat became the first Arab leader to address Israeli Knesset. Yeah, well, you know, you got to, you're, you're living in the same area. You got to work together. You got to talk together, you know. But, uh, you know, there's there's one hitch in the get along that just doesn't want to work with everybody else. So, you know, and it's uh, the very people who were shoehorned in by a bunch of uh, European forces. But as I said, that's a, uh, that's a, uh, that's a uh, statement to be made uh, in, in other platforms. Uh, what else do we got here? 1977, Steve Largett began NFL streak of 177 consecutive game receptions. That is incredible. That is... I don't have a word for that. That's... Oof. Wow. And we also have uh, 1977, Walter Payton of the Bears rushed for the NFL record 275 yards. And uh, I guess that's cumulative yards because uh, I, I don't know. 
if the loon was here, he could uh, educate me a little bit more about how big a football field is, but I don't think it's 275 yards long. You know what? Let's look it up. Uh, how long is a football field in yards? Uh, is football like 100 yards? Yeah, it's 100 yards. So I guess it's, it's back, back, and three quarters. So there you go. We also have in 1979, Islamic extremists led by Jihaman al-Otaybi occupy the Grand Mosque of Mecca, declaring the arrival of the Mahdi, the Redeemer of Islam, in the form of Muhammad Abdullah al kanhadi and call for the overthrow of the House of Saud, uh, which is the family that created Saudi Arabia. Uh, the siege lasted two weeks with, one, with hundreds killed and set Saudi Arabia on an ultra-conservative path. Yeah, and look at them today. You know, yikes! Working with China and Russia to make their old petrodollar to value to rival ours, which we are not going to hold a candle to theirs, because theirs is backed by gold and ours is not. <laughs> so, seven to nineteen seventy nine as well. We have the U.S.'s first artificial blood transfusion occurred at the University of Minnesota Hospital. All right, of all places, Minnesota, don't you know? Uh, blood transfusion. I guess they are transfusing blood with hot cocoa because it's just so damn cold and it's snowing up there. As, as Alice says, even though she's from uh, Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota should be called snow So, Anyway, we also have in 1980, Steve Petlick in Solar Challenger made the fir first solar-powered flight. Huh, alright. 1980 as well, United Artists withdrew $44 million movie Heaven's Gate for re-editing. That is a very expensive movie to have to uh, re-edit. Reminds me of um, that article we spoke about yesterday. The, the guy's first uh, uh, like symphony was it? I think, and he had to uh, he had to spend like nine years, you know, revising it until he like got it better or something. Uh, anyway, two years later in 1982, Drew Barrymore, at the age of seven, hosted Saturday Night Live. That is very young, so. I wasn't even born yet. Dang, Drew Barrymore, what year were you born in? Uh, 75, huh, okay. 1983, uh, 100 million people watched ABC TV movie the day after about nuclear war. Yikes. Uh, uh, 1983 as well, the Cleveland Browns shut out Patriots 30 to none. Well, that's because, uh, you know, they hadn't uh, gotten uh, good old, um, uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, Tom Deflated Balls uh, Brady they didn't have him yet so they didn't have him to deflate the balls and cheat in order to win so yeah uh, the Patriots actually had to play fair and square and got their teeth kicked in 1984 McDonald's made its 50 billionth hamburger that's a lot of hamburgers that's a lot of dead cows that's a lot of you know like you know when you, when you talk about hamburgers you know, like all these like you know anti meat people are like, oh, you're killing the cows, re re. Well, how many plants have we murdered? Why aren't you crying for them? You love plants so much. There's more plants that are murdered. If anything, I am on your side. I am killing the animals to keep them from killing the plants that you so value. You know, get your priorities straight, you vegans. Anyway. Uh, what else do we got here? 1984, uh, Mets pitcher Dwight Goodwin uh, won the National League Rookie of the Year, and once again, using his angry face. So, uh, while that was going on, the SETI Institute Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence was founded. That is a very major thing, in my opinion, at least. Um, you know, I'm, a, you know, people involved in ufology and all that stuff. Uh, which, by the way, uh, we have a ufology show hoping to premiere, or not premiere, we already did the premiere a while ago, but get back on the road this upcoming Saturday. So if anybody's interested in ufology, keep it, uh, your eyes peeled for that, even though it's a very disturbing uh, analogy. Not analogy, a phrase, whatever. Anyway, 1985, Microsoft Windows 1.0 was released. All right. We also have uh, the New York Yankees, Don Mattingly, easily won American League and most valuable player. And I just realized I have not had my background music going. So, oh, well. Uh, I guess we're just going to have a music list today. Uh, what else do we have? 1986, World Health Organization announced first global effort to combat AIDS. All right. 1988, Les Miserables opened, at bus and truck to, opened a bus and truck tour in Tampa, Florida. That's interesting. Isn't that a stage play? Like Les, Les Miserables in... Okay, well, that's, that's that. 
Uh, okay, Le Miz. Uh, well, if anybody can tell us what more this meant, like a bus and truck tour, like did they did they perform the show on buses and trucks or something? What happened? Well, let me know in the comment section. Anyway, 1990, the Sacramento Kings' last NBA win on the road for over a year. That is painful. So for, for, for the rest of the year from now, for, for, for another 365 days uh, on the road, they are losing every single game. That is painful. And while that was going on, Saddam Hussein announced plans to release German hostages. I don't really know much about that history. Uh, like, were they contract workers or something? Um... But while that was happening, we also have this. I wonder if these two are tied in together. I mean, they have to be. Uh, the Soviet Union showed reluctance to endorse the use of force against Iraq. <clears throat> so, you know, and Saddam Hussein is the, you know, leader of Iraq um, at the time. So I, I wonder what's going on. And, of course, we know, like, you know, the Taliban was created by the U.S. to fight uh, Russia, you know, as a proxy war out in Afghanistan back in, like, the 70s and all that stuff. We also have 1993 Savings and Loan Scandal. The United States Senate Ethics Committee issued a stern censor of California Senator Alan Cranston for his dealings with Savings and Loan Executive Charles Keating. Okay, so you break the law and we're going to sternly lecture you. How dare you, you naughty, naughty biscuit. Oh, naughty, naughty, for shame. Oh, well, we're not going to do anything against you. No, no heavens, no. Just, just for shame. Like... Put him in prison, you know? <clears throat> anyway, 1993 as well. Winnie Mandela's driver and bodyguard was murdered in Johannesburg. And Winnie Mandela, of course, being the wife of Nelson Mandela, uh, the former president of uh, South Africa, who the Nelson, or uh, the, the, the Mandela effect namesake is after because people thought he died in prison while other people, you know, knows that he survived and became the president of the very nation that put him in prison because of apartheid to begin with. So, and I forgot which one was a good guy, which one was a bad, between F.W. Clerk and P.W. Botha. Um, I don't know. Anyway, 1994, Angolan government and Unita re rebels signed the Lukaska, or the Lusaka Protocol in Zambia, ending 19 years of civil war. Wow. <coughs> That's, you know, like... Wars are awful. Long wars are even worse. But long civil wars, that has to be the absolute epitome of awful because not only is your nation in a war, but it's in a war with itself for a long period of time. There is no stability. There is no happiness. That is... That's awful. 1994 as well, Russian Como, uh, Cosmos satellites 2294, 2295, and 2296 launched. Boom, boom, boom. Three satellites in one hit. That's very unusual. We also have in 1994, uh, we got that one. So 1995, here we go. Uh, some Beatles stuff. The Apple Records, uh, Records, Apple Records released the Beatles Anthology 1, a double CD, triple LP, the first of a three-part series of rare recordings and outtakes by the Beatles. Set covered the years 1955 through 64, as well as a new collaboration, Free as a Bird, by John Lennon, a demo augmented by additional lyrics and performances by the surviving three. The album topped the Billboard chart in the U.S. and peaked at number two in the United Kingdom. And by the way, for those of you who do not know, uh, because of various reasons and, and stuff, it's a whole, sh you know, it's a whole bag of shenanigans uh, to to get into. But like, uh, the Beatles recently came out with a new song this year. Like, uh, it's, it's it's hard to imagine, but um, it, it's as I said, it's a whole thing. Like, it's it's a recording from one of the ones who has long ago since been dead. Uh, but they had the recording, and they, 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 were, they were not able to separate the music from his voice. And now they were able to, so now they're able to, you know, actually make a song proper. So, 2023, the Beatles are still releasing stuff. That is absolutely mind-melting. And our resident Beatles Nut Creek Alley, of course, you know, is the one who told me about all of this and everything. I really wish he was on the show right now, but whatever. Uh, you know, for him to, to, you know, go absolutely, you know, nuts about, you know, this article. But anyway, we got to move on up. 1995 as well. Diana, Princess of Wales, admitted she cheated on Prince Charles in a TV interview. Well, I don't, I don't really, like, I don't condone cheating and being, you know, like, um, like, you know, 
like, uh, untruthful. Uh, but, I mean, like, you know, with a mug like that, I, I can't, you know, I, I can't say yes or no in any way. I'm just going to be neutral in this, uh, in this discussion. Uh, but rest in peace, uh, Diana, but still, you're a cheater, you know, so my respect for you has gone down quite substantially. 1995 as well as well, the FDA, the Federal Drug, the, the Food and Drug Administration, approved a new therapy for use as initial AIDS treatment, 3TC. All right. So some more uh, AIDS stuff, you know, pretty interesting. Two AIDS articles on the same uh, calendar date in history. 1997, Iraq's Revolution Command Council formally endorsed an agreement arranged by Russia that enabled the UN weapons inspection teams to resume operations in Iraq. Yep. No, we never found any WMDs, did we? Did it, did it, did it, did it. 1997 as well, the last original Florida Marlin, Jeff uh, Conine, was traded to the uh, Kansas City Royals. Uh, yeah. All right. So the last Marlin, um, you know, last original Marlin of that team. That's kind of sad. Now everything is, you know, new people. We also have, in 1997, the Mavericks' A.C. Green set an NBA record of 907 consecutive games played. Woo! That is uh, some pretty strong work ethic right there. 1997 as well as well, Philadelphia Flyers' Eric Lindedros tried to bite San Jose Sharks defenseman Marty McScorley. Yikes. Who do you think you are, Mike Tyson? You know, at least he didn't, like, try to chop somebody's neck in half with an ice skate like, you know, someone recently who's not facing any legal repercussions because he ain't white, you know? So, that, that's just how today's world is. So, uh, what else do we got here? 1997, uh, Johannes Haley Celesi discovered the partial skull of a 2.5 million year old human ancestor, confirming and establishing the new species Australopithecus gari in Bori Middle Aguash, Ethiopia. Ooh, nice. 365 days later, uh, 1998, court in Taliban controlled Afghanistan declared accused terrorist Osama bin Laden, quote, a man without sin, end quote, in regard to the 1998 U.S. embassy bombings in Kenya and Tanzania. That did not age well at all. <laughs> Yikes. And we also have in 1998 the first model, uh, the first module uh, of the International Space Station, Zarya, was launched. All right. So the ISS, happy birthday. This is, I guess, what would be the birthday of the, of the ISS? The conception, you know, the beginning of the construction, the, the ending of construction, the launch. What would you consider? So, yeah, uh, Zarya, the first module that would make up the International Space Station, was launched from Kazakhstan, of all places. That's interesting. Uh, in 1789, New Jersey became the first state to ratify the Bill of Rights. Okay, well, we've already covered that earlier in the show, so that's interesting. Uh, oh, this is from Oopy. Oopy, hey, I use you for my new show. All right, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna add you into the link section just because, you know, good old Oopy. What else do we got here? Uh, 2001, Josh Groban. You raised me up so I can stand on mountains. Uh, released his debut album, Josh Groban, sales exceeded over 5 million units. Wow. And yeah, like, you know, Josh Groban, like, yeah, I, I like his songs. Like, you know, I'm not, like, it's... I, I, I was introduced to him uh, through my aunt. She had raised me up playing uh, in her living room way back in the day. So, anyway... Uh, 2001 as well, U.S. President George W. Bush dedicated the U.S. Department of Justice headquarters by the Robert F. Kennedy Justice Building on what would have been his 76th birthday. All right. Well, happy birthday to Robert F. Kennedy. Uh, rest in peace. So, And we also have 2002, Die Another Day, the 20th James Bond film release directed by Lee Tamahori, starring Pierce Brosnan and Haley Berry, uh, or Halle Berry, Brosnan's last role, uh, last turn in this role. So, die another day. And uh, I was watching something uh, either today or yesterday about uh, James Bond. Uh, at least, uh, like, like what, what was it? Like, anybody who has access to TV or movies uh, has seen at least one James Bond movie or something. Something like that. Anyway, what else do we got? In 2012, Toshiba unveiled a robot designed to help in nuclear disasters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably helping out with the Chernobyl area. And um, 
and uh, Fukushima as well. And isn't Toshiba a Japanese company? I think this might have been uh, expedited because of uh, Fukushima, now that I think about it. You know, let's do a surface level scratch of that potential rabbit hole. Um, yeah, the four-legged robot can climb. Okay, so here we go. So let's just add this uh, into the underbar of the description below. What does it look like? Okay, so it's it's that one. That looks very much like, uh, I forgot what they're called, but from Half-Life 2, Episode 2, or Episode 3, um, I'm not sure if Episode 3 is out, uh, but Half-Life 2, Episode 2, those smaller, like, really fast, annoying robot enemies, it kind of looks like one of those. So, hold on a second. You know, I, I got a little, hold on a second. Half-Life... To episode two, small robot. Uh, these look like one of these. A hunter. That's what they're called. It, it look, kind of looks a little bit like a hunter. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Yeah, a little bit. Anyway, what else do we got here? 2014, nearly 5 million illegal migrants in the U.S. have the threat of deportation deferred after President Barack Obama uh, announced sweeping immigration changes. And let's not forget, Obama is the one who put all of those Mexican children in cages. Don't blame Trump. Blame Obama. So, yep. 2015, more than half of all the trees in Amazon forest at risk of extinction, according to data published in Journal Sciences Advances. Yeah, propaganda crap. 2016, South Korean President Park Geun Hye's controversial uh, friend, uh, Choi Soon Shil. Uh, charged with abuse of authority and, co and coercion amid calls to also impeach the president. Uh, and that was 2016. This this individual right here. Um, yeah, first female president of South Korea. Corrupt as hell. So, you know, yeah, you're not really uh, setting a good precedent for the rest of uh, your, um, you know, your your people, lady. You know, the, the, the women trying to get into office. So... Oh, and this one, you know, laid the groundwork, you know, for the same exact thing. Uh, 2017, Atlanta's Georgia's Dome, one of the world's largest covered stadiums, was destroyed in a controlled implosion. That's unfortunate, but, you know, things have to go down. And, you know, speaking of horrible female leaders, Angela Merkel. Didn't I damn you earlier this episode? Uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel in 2017 announced that coalition talks to form a government have collapsed. Uh, you know, whatever it is that she was working on that she wanted, I hope it didn't work. But I, I'm happy it didn't work. She was an awful person, you know, like like Hitler 2.0, Hitler light, uh, female Hitler, whatever. I'm not sure. Anyway, 2017 as well as well, investment corporation Ten Cents market value hit 511 billion dollars, the first Asian company to join the 500 billion club, um, and that is of course out of the CCP, a Chinese Communist Party controlled organization. So, yeah, scary, scary. 2018, Airbnb bans listing in Israeli settlements in the West Bank. Yeah, because, you know, a certain people keeps uh, attacking another certain people, you know? So, uh, we also have 2018, Indian actor Amitabha Bakhtanan uh, confirmed he has paid off the debt of 1,398 farmers worth $560,000 amid Indian agricultural crisis. Uh, they, uh, at, at Amit Abad, uh, Bakhtanan, I, I really, I know I'm butchering your name, good sir, and like, is, are you even still alive? Uh, you are. So, like, you are a bamf, a badass mofo for doing that. That is really cool that you paid off the debts of those farmers. Hats off to you. Hats off to you. So, Yeah. What else do we got? 2018 Mississippi 15 week abortion ban overturned by U.S. judge saying it violated women's constitutional rights. Uh, well, you know, that's a whole conversation for a uh, rumble section of the peanuts that we were going to go over yesterday, but uh, we kind of really got off topic, but it was still a fun show. We also have 2018 more than 40 religious scholars killed in an event to mark the birth of Prophet Muhammad by a suicide bomber near the airport in Kabul, Afghanistan. Yikes. Absolutely yikes. 2018 as well as well. Sell off in technology stocks led to stock market losses wiping out all 2018 market gains. That sounds devastating. And we also have 2019. Britain's uh, Prince Andrew announced he is stepping back from public duties after outcry from disastrous interview on his friendship with Jeffrey Epstein, 
Ooh, that is a name you do not want to be associated with. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Uh, yeah, here we go. We also have 2019. Oxford Dictionary's word of the year is climate emergency. Of course it is. You know, propaganda garbage. 2019. Snakes lived with hind legs for 60 million years. Uh, Najek Rionegrindia. Uh, according to research from La Brietia Paleontological... Uh, er, paleon, paleontological... I, I know I'm not pronouncing that right, I think. Area, Argentina, published in Science Advances. That is interesting. It's snakes had legs. Uh, we also have uh, 2019. U.S. Ambassador uh, Gordon Sondland testifies in impeachment inquiry that, quote, we followed the president's orders uh, and that everyone was in the loop, end quote, over Ukraine dealings. That sounds more like propaganda. I have no idea. It sounds like propaganda. It's, it's recent uh, events. No. We also have 2022, Disney announces Bob Iger's return as chief executive less than a year after he retired from the company. Yeah, yeah, because freaking Kathleen Kennedy just, like, drove that whole thing directly into the ground. So, killed a bunch of franchises, destroyed Marvel, destroyed the MCU, you know, uh, destroyed, uh, you know, uh, Star Wars, destroyed everything. That, that female, that, that lady, you know, just completely ruined everything. Um, what else do we got? Uh, let's see. Where do we go? Uh, I, I got off on the... Oh, here we go. 2022, Dutch driver Max Verstappen retained Formula One Drivers' Championship for Red Bull with a win in the season-ending Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Verstappen's third straight Abu Dhabi win, record 15th of the season, record 454 points of the season. Okay. Uh, we also have 2022, Elton John completed the North American leg of his farewell Yellow Brick Road, the final tour at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California. Yeah, and he is the last remaining queen of England. And 2022 as well as well, New York State activists or New York State activates the National Guard to assist with historic snow event around Buffalo, with Orchard Park receiving almost six and one fifth feet. So one fifth, twenty percent, um, over uh, almost six. So that's over. So that is snow taller than me by five inches, because I'm five foot ten, five foot eleven. So that's six foot. What is, hold on a second. What is 20% of a foot? What is 20% of a foot? Uh, so zero point, oh, so two and one, so six foot two. So yeah, three inches at least taller than me. Or approximately the same height as a golden loon, actually. Uh, we also have uh, 2022, just last year, the United Nations COP27 uh, Summit uh, agreed to establish fund to help poor and vulnerable countries with climate change with committee to be made up of representatives from 24 countries. Okay. And uh, 2022 as well, as well, as well, as well, as well. Uh, Brandon turned, 28, uh, turned 80 years old. You know, Novell Chamberlain here. Uh, becoming the first octogenarian to serve in the country's highest office and a leading example as to why it should never be done again. So... And last but not least, we have the world's longest-serving uh, president, authoritarian leader, Teodoro Obiang Nguema Mbasco, at the age of 80, wins re-election in Equatorial Guinea, extending his 43-year-old rule. Huh, that's weird. Uh, authoritarian leader is the same age as somebody else. Huh, a little strange, almost as if they're the same person. Oh, wait, they might be. So, anyway, uh, that will conclude the show. Once again, please check the underbar in the description for any links you may find interesting, including when limited to all things on the coalition. Go check out our link tree. You know, we are not just on YouTube. We're on Rumble. We're on BitChute. We're on Odyssey, but that's only for uh, kicking the peanut, really. Uh, and we have, you know, uh, people who do their own shows, you know, like uh, King's Refuge and whatnot. Uh, so, please, you know, check uh, check all that out down there. Um, uh yeah, for your dose of pessimist daily, we stream every day at 11 in the morning Pacific time, which is 12 noon Mountain, 1 p.m. Central, and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, respectively. For all of you and all of us, I am Aosander, Intel, and you are you, and until you catch us tomorrow, uh, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection, rate five thumbs, and subscribe. Toodles! Uh, stop recording, and in stream. There we go. In stream.